Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Tuesday, February 28th edition of VR News. Lots of gaming releases today at the Game Developers Conference. So many, in fact, uh, I've decided to do a two-part news episode tonight to give the games, you know, a little bit more due diligence, not just show the static screenshots, but some actual footage from the games themselves, talk about them a little bit, because I'm telling you, there were a lot of announcements today. Super excited about that. This first one, however, just regular news episode. We're going to start with the game ROM Extraction, an update announced by Dev's First Contact. The game is going to essentially get a new level. They're calling the new level Overrun. And as you can probably guess from the name, it's basically you holding off an alien infestation that is trying to do exactly that, overrun your ship. You're going to get a new two-handed plasma rifle. They're calling it the EOS-15. Now, if this was a game you kind of had on your radar, but you were waiting for the price to drop a little bit, that time would be now 75% off. So the regular price, $19.99 US on for Fiverr. Yes, a fiver. $5 US, you can have the game. It is for both Rift and Vive. So you get the game on Steam uh, via Steam VR. You can play both. Now, speaking of the Game Developers Conference, uh, Oculus's Jason Rubin was basically asked about the upcoming game release schedule. Just to comment on that. Uh, specifically, how many games Oculus would be releasing in 2017 and when. And he had this to say, at least one Oculus Studio game releasing every month. When he was asked to double check that statement, he nodded yes, the affirmative. And he then added, everything we have announced is still on track to release this year. This includes games like Wilson's Heart and Lone Echo. They're not here at the show, but those teams are still working incredibly hard to finish those games. And this is not everything. 2017 will have more games from us than even what we are showing you here today. There are still unannounced titles on the way this year. So, very good news. And in fact, that's what we're going to do in part two, is look at quite a few of those titles that were announced. Next news piece concerning AMD GPUs. They are going to start supporting asynchronous reprojection in Steam VR. So... Right now, that was basically uh, NVIDIA's domain, so it's nice to see AMD have that capability there as well. They also mentioned when they were on the stage uh, a very bright VR future. They went way into the future looking at stuff like 16K and some other things, so it's nice for them to, you know, seem to at least indicate they have a roadmap plan that's going to see them through to at least 16K. I can't even imagine 16K. I mean, I can imagine 4K, and I'm pretty thrilled with the thought of that within a few years, uh, wireless. But 16K? Holy crap. That would be probably amazing. All right. Next news piece. Google Daydream support coming to Unity March 31st. So the update is the 5.6 Unity update. That's going to include that and it's also going to ship with support for the Vulkan API and that is a GPU standard from the same group we talked about a few days ago the Kronos group uh, those guys behind the open XR that we announced HTC was looking at finally joining and basically having all the big players on board for an open standard so very cool so look for all of that in the 5.6 Unity update. That'll be March 31st. And the next story, Unity's editor VR is up to plan 6,000 downloads in total so far. Now, to me, 6,000 downloads doesn't sound like an awful lot. I mean, 6 million would probably be a lot or 600,000. But if that's in line with you know, what their planning was for it in terms of moving that many units. Can't argue with that. And uh, 
hopefully this is going to provide benefits for devs down the road and we're going to see some exciting stuff get developed with it but uh having been just recently in alpha probably going to require a few more months a couple quarters to pass before we see anything of substance would be my guess and then the, the next story and the last, uh, Epic CEO Tim Sweeney on how we get to mass virtual reality and augmented reality adoption. So he basically took to the stage, and when I'm talking about rosy futures, like what AMD was talking about, that's where Sweeney was going. And he basically said the following, when asked or when speaking to what it would take for VR to be an omnipresent technology. So price, obviously an important factor, but he thinks there's more there. He said to displace monitors and keyboards and mice and become truly the way we do all these things in real life, you're gonna need about 4K resolution per eye. And miniaturization, that's much more convenient to wear all day, every day. And then he says, all these things are already happening. Moore's law alone is going to get us to 4K per eye. And there are multiple manufacturers building 4K LCDs that are smartphone sized. And as soon as they're miniaturized and built into OLEDs, that'll be the next step. And then he goes on to talk about uh, reducing the weight, size, obviously cost, and then ends it with, I think we're on a 10 to 12 year track until the display part of VR and AR is reduced to the size of your glasses. No more weight, no more inconvenience, something you can essentially wear all the time and make a part of your everyday life. So very cool, very exciting. And you know what, with the news a couple of days ago from Sony, I don't know if it's you guys maybe i'm reading a little too much into it but does it not seem to you guys that that one story has had just a massive positive impact chris brower talked about him many times one of the viewers here he pointed out the view counts up the last few days and stuff like upload vr road to vr venture beat all of these vr sites getting much more views right after that announcement so I've also noticed that the press in general has been making more positive headlines. So it's amazing when we talk about how much damage bad press can do, especially when it's, you know, not accurate, not factual. So perfect example would be when it then spins positive, like with Sony's announcement, this is the uh, side effect of that, and it's a pretty damn good side effect. All right, guys, that is it for part one. I'll be back with part two. Cheers.